10.3 is such a beautiful equation. Let me show you why. So 10.1, we're supposed to explain what is meant by the photoelectric effect. So that is a process whereby electrons are ejected from a metal surface when a light of a suitable frequency is incident on the metal surface. That is 10.1. Let's take a look at 10.2. Explain why there is no reading on the ammeter when the red light is used. Let's go through our equation statement and see what is happening. So the diagram below shows a photo tube that has used that was used to demonstrate the photoelectric effect. The demonstration was carried out by shining light from a red, a green, a blue, and an ultraviolet light source onto the surface of the photo tube. So back to 10.2. Explain why there's no reading on the ammeter when a red light is used. We know fully well that for red light, we have very high wavelength and a lower frequency. If there's no reading on the ammeter, it simply tells us that the energy of the light that is incident is less than the work function. If this is the case, then photoelectrons won't be emitted and there will be no reading on our ammeter. Let's go ahead and do 10.3, the interesting equation. For the following statements, use increase, decrease, or remains the same to complete the statement. Let's take a look at 10.3.1. The kinetic energy of the photoelectrons when ultraviolet light is shown onto the surface of the tube instead of green light. So we're supposed to fill in here. If we use ultraviolet light instead of green light, then the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is going to increase. So we're supposed to fill with increases in that equation. Let me show you why. We know fully well that the energy is equal to the work function plus E k max. If we make E k max the subject of the formula, we get the energy minus the work function. So if we use ultraviolet light of a higher frequency, then the kinetic energy is going to increase. That is 10.3.1. Let's do 10.3.2. The reading on the ammeter when a green light of higher intensity is shown on the surface of the photo tube. Explain this observation. Well, it will increase. The reading on the ammeter will increase. What does the ammeter read? The ammeter reads the current. And we know that the current is equal to the charge divided by the time so if the time decreases then the current increases another thing that affects the current is the amount of charge passing per unit time another factor that affects the current is the amount of charge passing so if we increase the intensity we're increasing the number of photons we are sending onto the metal surface if we increase the number of photons we are sending on the metal surface then a higher number of electrons will be ejected from the metal surface a higher number of electrons will be emitted electrons carry charge so if we increase the number of electrons being emitted the current is going to increase as the current is directly proportional to the amount of charge that is 10.3.2 the last question 10.4 the cathode is made up of copper with a work function of 3.52 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we have the work function. If ultraviolet light with a wavelength of 390 nanometers was used during demonstration for calculate the speed of the photoelectrons that were ejected. So we have the wavelength. We are looking for the speed. So let's call this V max. Well, which equation can we use in this case? We know that the energy is equal to the work function plus E k max. So in place of energy, we're going to replace that with Planck's constant multiplied by speed of light divided by wavelength. This is equal to the work function. We do have the work function. And instead of having E k max, we're going to have half the mass multiplied by V max squared. Well, the mass is the mass of an electron, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31. So let's go ahead and substitute. Planck's constant, that is 6.63 .6, times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power 8, divided by our wavelength, which is 390 nanometers. What is nanometers again? 
that is times 10 to the minus 9. This is equal to the work function 3.52 times 10 to the minus 19. Plus, I have the mass of an electron 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 multiplied by V max squared. So, on the left hand side, we're going to have 5.108 times 10 to the minus 19 being equals to 3.52 times 10 to the minus 19 plus 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 divided by 2 multiplied by v max squared clearly we need to take this term to the left hand side if we do that we're gonna get 1.588 multiplied by 10 to the minus 19 being equals to 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 divided by 2 multiplied by v max squared. If we make v max squared and take square roots on both sides, we're going to get v max being equals to the square root of 1.588 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by a half multiplied by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 5.89 times 10 to the power 5 meters per second. Fairly quick, but very far away from the speed of light.